Morning, everybody. I'm Chris St. Tubians. I'm serving as zoning administrator this morning, and I'd like to welcome you to the May 16th zoning administrator meeting. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. The first order of business is to approve the minutes for the May 2nd, 2024 meeting. Um, the minutes for May 2nd are approved as submitted. The next item on the agenda is um, we're taking public comments on non-agenda matters. So this is a time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda, but which are within the subject matter jurisdiction of this committee. If there's anybody attending in person who would like to make a public comment on items not uh, on this agenda, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Um, statement of purpose. And just a, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, the microphones are very sensitive and can pick up on um, murmurs and conversations. So just to let you know. I'm sorry, can I have some clarification? You're asking for items not on the agenda? Yes. Persons not on the agenda? Items. Okay, thanks. Yes. yes. So uh, the statement of purpose for the zoning administrator, um, the zoning administrator is appointed by the planning and economic development director and has the responsibility and authority conduct to conduct public meetings and hearings and to act on applications for minor or reduced review authority projects or entitlements. A determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed by, to the Design Review Board, Cultural Heritage Board, Planning Commission, or City Council as applicable to the decision. All actions taken by the zoning administrator today may be appealed within 10 calendar days. If the final day of the appeal period falls on a non-business day, the appeal period will extend to the next business day. There are no consent items, so we'll move on to the first schedule item, which um, is public, a public hearing for a conditional use permit for the club at Flamingo uh, Global Court at 2777 4th Street, file number CUP 23-066, and Planner Shaykali will be presenting. Thank you. There you go. Good morning, everyone. My name is Monet Shekali. I'm a senior planner, and I'm going to present the project today. So as Ms. Tumions mentioned, this is a minor use permit for Flamingo Hotel Health Club to all courts. A minor use permit is to allow the continued operation of a health club, which is sports and active recreational facility that would include multi-use sport courts. This multi-sport court is also converting existing two tennis courts to eight pickleball courts. Here is where the site is located at 2777 4th Street. The site is zone PD, which stands for Plan Development, and it was from 1956. The general plan land use is retail and business service, which is a commercial land use. And I'm going to go through a history of the site. Some of the neighbors have questions about the history of the site and when the club and the hotel came in. Here I'm sharing an aerial view from the site, which is from 1963. As you can see, the site, site was vacant and the hotel was constructed in 1957. Here is an aerial view from 1987. In 1987, a use permit and design review was submitted for a tennis and health club, a childcare facility, and exercise rooms, which were approved. Here you can see where the tennis courts were started being constructed. And here is an aerial photo from 1991. And in 1988, a design review and use permit was approved for a 10,000 square feet tennis club. You can see here the tennis club has been constructed. And another aerial view, still again from 1991, but in 1989, the club submitted a permit for a new basketball court and a jogging track, which were approved. And that is the location of the basketball court. And in 1989, an application for two racquetball courts and to revise the location of the basketball court was submitted. 
And here is the aerial view from 2001. In 1996, a permit was submitted for the expansion of the resort for the hotel and to add uh, an existing gym to the site. Here is where the gym structure was constructed and here is the location of the addition to the hotel. And in 2003, a new squash court and exercise room also were approved to be constructed on a tennis court. However, they never get constructed. That was the location was proposed. And in 2004, this is an aerial photo from 2005. In 2004, a design review permit was approved for a new lab pool. And that star shows the location of the pool. And here is the aerial view from 2009, which shows the pool that was constructed. And this is the aerial view from 2022, which we received a complaint on December 5th about an outdoor tent covering a tennis court and the use of a tennis court for pickleball courts with no permit. You can see one of the courts being covered for a tennis, uh, for a pickleball courts. And in uh, on October 2023, we sent our uh, code enforcement and one of the supervisors to do a sand measurement from the site. Those numbers are showing the areas where the sand was measured and uh, the applicant team also were measuring the noise. The report from the code enforcement officer and the measurements from the applicant teams showed similar numbers. And at the time when they were doing the measurements, all eight courts were full with people playing pickleball. So these numbers are from the date that all the courts were being used and people were playing. Our code talks about noise measurements at the property line. For residential users, this no the noise is 55 decibel at the property line. There are two spots close at the property lines here. You can see the minimum noise is 41 and the highest is 68. And, and another location close to the court is 55 decibel to 70. And those numbers, the 70 and 68 is higher than what the court allows, which is minimum, maximum requirement, 55 decibel. The applicant is proposing the two tennis courts to be converted to eight courts and proposing to install two tarps. You can see them here shown as a green line, one on the north side of the court and one on the west side of the court. The existing fence is almost about 11 feet and the tarp will be installed on those existing fence. The applicant has provided a letter and support letter from the tarp installer saying by installing those two tarps, the noise will be reduced to meet the code, city code. So it will be 15 decibel less than what is without the installation of those tarps. Here are the two courts and those are the existing fence that will be covered with the tarp. About public comments. This project was notified twice when the application was submitted and when this meeting was held. Since then, we have received some calls, some letters, emails, and one letter in person. We had one person sending email in support that. We had also a phone call in support of the proposed project. And we, have, I, we received some calls and questions about hours of the operation for the courts, about the parking demand, and majority of the complaints were regarding the noise, the noise created from the proposed pickleball courts. I tried to provide responses or some of the comments about the noise. I tried to provide the comments about the noise study that was done for another site in Walnut Creek and the applicant team. If you have any question, they can address them. About the court hours, there's a condition added to the resolution that restricts the hours of operation or play of the courts from 9 a.m. till 7 or whichever is earlier when it gets darker. So in winter, it will get dark earlier. The courts have to be stopped for being used. About parking demand, there is plenty of parking spots provided on the courts and there are already 90, let me see, 97 parking spaces provided for the Flamingo a health club, which is sufficient and exceeds the requirement of the code. And um, 
Uh, yesterday, I received two emails, one from someone named Nick Allen. He had questions and comments and opposing the project regarding the noise. And he mentioned that the noise study provided contradicts with what, you, what is provided. And the study done for a Walnut Creek has a different topography than what the site is located. <laughs> And he is opposing the project. And I received an email from another neighbor yesterday, last night, mentioning that uh, from this person named Ellie, saying that after they had a conversation with the applicant team, they have no longer concerns. And uh, they like very, they, they have been, uh, the applicant team have been open and honest about plans and their desire to be a good neighbors and to work with the community. She first sent an email having comments and concerns about the use, but yesterday, last night, she had no more comments and had a conversation with the applicant team. So, uh, continuing the presentation, the project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act, and it qualifies for exemption under Section 15301. This is a minor alteration to an existing facility and with that, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the zoning administrator by resolution approve the minor conditional use permit for the property located at 2777 4th Street. The applicant team is available here and the person who is in charge of installing the tarp is also available on Zoom. And if you have any questions, they can answer those questions. I'm also available to answer questions. That was my presentation. Thank you, Planner Shekali. Would the applicant like to give um, a presentation? I don't have a presentation. Okay. Um, I really just kind of wanted to say, my name's Laura Crone, and I'm the Executive Director of Wellness at the Flamingo. So I'm the one that presented the uh, narrative and all the backup document along with my Director of Tennis, um, who worked with the city closely. First, really just want to say thank you to the city for being fair, professional, and unbiased in this whole process hearing all sides, sharing all the information, um, helping us be as transparent as possible, because um, <clears throat> that's the best thing we can do, right? Um, as stewards of the community, um, um, experience of what happens at the club, you know, the, the Montecito Heights um, Health Club, which is what's been up until this last year when we changed the name and signage hasn't, hasn't even been changed, you know, has been a community entity and um, a steward for, we have up to 2,200 members actively um, at the club right now. So that's a huge chunk of our community that's living in close proximity to the club and enjoys what we offer there, which is a slice of wellness for you, right? We know that um, with that, everything has to be considered in terms of the impact in terms of the greater good of the community. Um, but I just really wanna stress the importance of what the club members say to me is the value, the reason that they come there is because it is a community environment. There is relationships, mm -hmm. there's social environments. Um, and pickleball is just one component of that. You know, we do, we have the laps when we have the tennis, we have um, all types of programming inside for health and wellness, as well as what we do across the property as a whole. Um, so we really want to be the news. And I feel like we have stepped up to do all we can prove that in, in this process. Um, actions will speak louder than words. The TARPs will be up. Um, <clears throat> will include asking um, anyone that's from the resort to use the soft new eco pads, which are now um, pads. We'll pay the money to purchase all those. So there's additional sound mitigation. Um, we know a lot of our uh, pickleball enthusiasts who are here with us today um, are super conscientious about all that. The other component I just really want to emphasize before we get into all of this, and there's the pros and cons, is, you know, when we did the sound testing, we had all eight courts going. We had 32 people out there. We were asking everyone to hoot and holler and be as loud as we can, get maximum capacity of the volume. And those spike numbers were not consistent across. It's just in pockets, right? The, the reality is that courts, those courts won't be used at full capacity every day, all day long in those hours. Middle of the summer, it's going to be empty. No one's out there in the heat of the day. Nick can approve that. There's no tennis going on. There's no pickleball. There's, you know, very, really nothing's going on outside in the heat of our summer here. Um, so in terms of the use, you know, it's not going to be 
eight courts going forward. Um, I also you know, invited our neighbors that did share complaints to come meet with me. Some of you were able to, and I appreciate that. Got a chance to meet you face to face. Those that couldn't, some sent me comments. Um, others just didn't respond. But really just offering that, you know, we will do what we can to constantly be in communication to check. You know, and if there's ways that we need to make it better, we're going to do what we can to do that, right? Um, but again, that's words, right? We really appreciate everyone's concerns as good neighbors in the community. We know that sound can be an inconvenience, can be a hardship, can be um, perceived as a, as a negative. Um, and we know you spend a lot of money and you live in a beautiful place for good reason because it's so beautiful and you want to be able to enjoy. So I, I believe that, you know, seven o'clock at the end in the summertime, you still have two plus hours of evening time. We won't start until nine when even our pickleball people want to start earlier because it's so hot in the summer. Um, so we we'll, we want to meet you wherever we can to make this as um, collaborative as possible. And we'll continue to be available for that purpose. So I just really, on behalf of the resort um, and being that we are big employers in our community, community centric in terms of our club and what we do at the resort in general, um, that we are strong taxpayers, strong tourism drivers, um, we're a business entity, but we're also a community member. So we really want to be here to support the overall well-being of all that we do moving forward to the health and the um, vibrancy of everybody that enjoys the club, but also that lives in our community and might come over for a cocktail or just a, a bite to eat or something. I hope that today um, we walk away with feeling fair and that this process is done non-biased and done in a professional way because the city has really shown up to, to show that that's their intention. So thank you very much. And um, were you able to review the resolution? Do you agree with the conditions? I do, okay. 100%. Thank you. And as I mentioned, I'm willing to add additional pieces to that and I'm even willing to put in the narrative if I need to that we will buy the the 35 brackets that, you know, are the sound mitigation brackets that just came out to the market, which are constantly being improved upon. There's probably a ball that's going to come out someday soon, you know, to also reduce, because it's a, you know, it's a universal concern, the noise with pickle um, across the country. So, um, and then additionally, um, you know, I, I shared with the, uh, the neighbors that came last week, that we have no plans for outside tournaments. The only kind of, tournament that we would have would be our own members having round robins that happen occasionally. We also do groups and a lot of groups want to come there. You know, we've, made it, we've, we've suffered um, quite a bit of financial loss in these last 10 months because we can't have any groups there that are interested in pickleball. But again, it would be short bouts of time and it wouldn't be this giant tournament with outside people. There would be no bleachers and, you know, so just in good faith of the concerns about tournaments and things, there won't be outside tournaments at this time. And okay. no, no plan for that. Please, you know, no, no plan for tournaments, only our internal with the groups that come and our own um, members and at that point, at this point. Okay. And at the, um, only members of the club can use the pickleball court, is that? No, well, we have the resort. So we have okay. 176 rooms at the resort. Yes. And we are quite a, big group resort hotel during peak seasons, like right now it's peak season for groups. Um, so they will be able to use the courts as well. And any of our guests, guests. Mm -hmm. can come over and, and rent uh, courts. But they'll have to use our paddles and the paddles will be the new eco paddles. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'd like to hear from the tarp installer. I've, I don't know his name. His name's Joshua. Joshua. Joshua Collin. Thank you. I don't see anybody by that name on Zoom, but if you are that person, if you could please raise your hand, I can allow you to speak. You know, he was traveling, so okay. and it was, I talked to him this morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe you're able to press star nine to unmute yourself if you are calling in via phone. Or to raise your hands, get star six to unmute yourself. Text right now. See anybody um, 
So. Can we take a recess to get him? If you need him to be next, I mean, I would recommend maybe we go into public and we can circle back. I did speak with him okay. an hour and a half ago, so I know he was planning, but he is traveling, so that was his okay. concern is his access, and depending on where he is. Okay. I can step out and try to call him. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, Yeah. Yeah, because when I open the public comment, I want people to be able to comment on his comments. <laughs> well. Let's do a five minute recess to see if we can get him on the phone because I want you to be able to comment on his presentation as well. So we will reconvene at uh, 10.56. He's, okay. Saying he's trying to, hold on one second, Josh. So what he says yeah. he's trying to do, what you asked him to do is star. Star nine to raise your hand. Star nine to raise your hand, and then he can let you in once you raise your hand. That's <laughs> right now, so we are taking a recess, so oh, yeah, he has about five minutes. Recess. I, I can. Okay. Okay. Yes, hello. This is Joshua Conlon, the owner of JMC. Yes, can you hear me? This is Joshua Conlon. Oh, yes, hello. Oh, okay, we can hear you. My name is Joshua Conlon, and I'm the owner of JMC Lighting and also Pickle at 1056. Joshua, we are at a recess. We are going to be reconvening at 1056.
on the line to explain the TARP installation process and um, how the sound from pick, the pickleball course will be mitigated to the property line. So hi, Joshua. Thanks for joining. Joshua, we're ready for you if you can go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you. I, I'm sorry about that. I'm traveling and pulled over in, in my car. Yes, my name is Joshua Connell. Hi, Joshua. Can you explain um, the tarp installation process and how it will dampen the sound to 55 decibel levels at the property line? Right. Yes. Well, um, we have a sound curtain. It, it, it's um, it, it, the curtain was. We had it manufactured to absorb the sound, to lessen the sound, the pitch that you that you have. I'm very familiar with the issues in pickleball. I've installed this this curtain throughout the country. Uh, we have letters on our website. We have all the. The tests, the Walnut Creek tests being one, done by two sound experts. Uh, we have videos independently done at other clubs, the Valley Hunt Club in Huntington Beach, the Valley Hunt, uh, uh, and, and also the, the Valley Hunt Club. The curtains are designed to absorb sound. Um, we are doing something different here with this project. Normally, on all the projects we've done, for example, we just recently did the Tiburon Peninsula Club, very close to you. We've They've had noise issues. We've had nothing but positive feedback from that club. We recently did the Round Hill Country Club. Again, homes in, in the area, uh, threats of potential lawsuits, that has dissipated. Uh, the Diablo Country Club. We have these letters on our website for view on my website. The, the, what we're doing different with the Flamingo is on all of the other projects I've done throughout the country, we always leave a little gap at the bottom at least three to four inches. And that, the reason for that is so that they can wash the courts and the courts can get dirty. And this, with the Flamingo, what they're going to do, we, we discussed this, is when they do decide to wash the courts, uh, they can, the, the tarps can be lifted up. But we also had hooks on, on the top of the fence and they come down about three inches. So we are covering the fence from, from, from the very top to the very bottom um, and uh, 55 decimals we've had I mean we just did uh, we had a uh, independent person go out with sound meter people playing on the courts at the Huntington Club in Huntington Beach California and they were getting readings of 49 51 52 um, so we're we're pretty confident uh, that we can we can meet or ex exceed the 55 le level, and um, I could go into what the material is if you'd like, um, but it, it's a um, um, we, we think we're gonna we're, we are very confident that we will help alleviate this problem. We've had no issues in putting it up. We've put it up all over the country. We've had nobody yeah. return it. We've had we've had no um, all of the, the problems have gone away. I was especially proud of the Diablo Country Club because that was very close to litigation. And the home owner was literally, oh, 50 feet. And uh, they went out, and the, the general manager and the director of tennis pickleball, and they had the pickleball players out there, and they did their own analysis. And everybody walked away happy. Mr. Um, Conlin, um, can you explain... Um what the tarp is made of and how it lessens the sound? Is well, it insulated tarp? Yeah, it's a it, Yes, it's a polyester. It's a base. It's a cloth. It, it's basically a, it has a sound insulation felt or, 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 or and sound in, an insulation wool in it. It's a, um, the multi mesh fabric, uh, uh, polyester canvas, the very high quality material. It's designed to absorb sounds. And or sound waves, um, it, it might you know what. The, there's other companies out there that have something a little different. They they reflect sound. They bounce sound. This this product is like a um, 
it has a, a, a nice, um, oh, what would the word be? It, it's just a thicker product that is designed to absorb the felt, uh, I mean, absorb the sound and the sound waves. Um, so that's what it is. That's what it's made out of. It's, okay. It's, um, it, Sure. Thank you, Mr. Conlon. Thank you for joining us and doing that explanation. Yes. So now I'm going to open it up to public comment. So um, you'll have two minutes to speak. Um, if you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand and the um, reporting secretary will call on you. Please state your name for the record before you make a comment. All right. Um, Go ahead. I'm going to start this way, move my way over. Uh, if everybody could please use one public comment speaking period, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Sure. Where could I go then? I'm not standing in front of me. You can stand in front of me, Tom. Okay, sorry. I don't want to. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Tom Skinner. I live on East Foothill Drive, five houses down and less than a quarter mile from the proposed courts. I'm also a charter member of the club having joined over 30 years ago, literally a while the foundation was being poured. I also lived for three years in the condominiums up above the courts. And lastly, I'm an avid pickleball player, although my friends here would say marginal player at best. <laughs> Does this give me a louder voice? No. Am I an expert in the permitting process? No. Just here with maybe a unique perspective. While I live close to these proposed courts, I am not affected by the noise from the club. I understand, however, the concerns of these neighbors who uh, potentially would be affected. Over a year ago, I encouraged these neighbors to detail those concerns to the club. And I thought their concerns were reasonable at the time. Neighbors, I now believe this has been accommodated. The health club at the urging of the city has made several changes accommodations and concessions from the original plan. At great expense, I might add. You have been heard, and now I believe it's the time to move on. The sport of pickleball for the last several years and currently is the number one growing sport in America. In fact, the competing health club, the airport club, has over 500 active players and is virtually sold out. I do, think Mont I do not think Montecito will have anything close to this, but the point is the sport is not going away, nor is the health club where we live. I will also point out that a majority of the pickleball players are seniors, kind of obvious. <laughs> and as healthy exercise, this decision will be impactful to many who play the game and goes well beyond the few neighbors who have always lived and have always known they were moving into a neighborhood with a health club. Frankly, I see that as a benefit to have a health club in our neighborhood. As, as players, we are not getting everything we wanted. Believe me, we would love to play at night with lights. We would love longer hours, longer than 9 a.m. and later than 7 p.m. But we understand compromise is necessary. To the neighbors who still have concerns, despite these accommodations, the answer cannot simply be no pickleball. It cannot be my way or the highway. Thank you, Aren't we all tired? You're out of time. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, well, my last part was to applaud the city and hope that you continue. And if you'd like to submit written comments. No, no, can. okay. Good. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Two minutes, and there's a timer for each. Good morning. My name is Dave Kraft. I am a member at Montecito Heights since 89. And I'm also uh, a realtor in Santa Rosa. And so I wanted to address the issue of uh, there were some concerns, I understand, about the potential uh, drop in property value. And I've done quite a bit of research. Um, and from everything around the country, I, I've got a couple of articles here very quickly. Proximity to health, a fitness center can contribute to an increase in property value as the demand for homes near fitness centers rises. The market responds by recognizing the added value of such locations. Home buyers, home buyers are often willing to pay a premium for properties that offer convenience and amenities associated with nearby fitness centers. 
This can result in higher selling prices and a favorable return um, for the investment. So uh, when it comes to selling a home, uh, location plays a crucial role in attracting buyers. And uh, the, health, the fitness centers are increasing the value throughout the country. So fitness center is a plus, not a minus. We have a fitness center. It's been there. You know, you have a fitness center. The number one sport in uh, America now, as Tom mentioned, is pickleball. So a fitness center that offers pickleball it has the ability to increase the value even further. So uh, fears aside, it can only increase the value. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there for everybody to think about. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. If you could state your name for the Sure. My name is Dan Galvin. I live at 2766 Canterbury Drive in Bennett Valley. I've been a member of Montecito Heights Health Club for almost 30 years. I want to stress that I'm speaking only in my individual capacity, not as an attorney, since I don't represent anybody here, and not as chairman of the Board of Public Utilities. Although I have a great love and affinity for Galvin Park, where I've been forced to play for over the last eight months, I want to get back to playing pickleball at Montecito. Most of us members started playing pickleball at Montecito. We've been forced to play at Galvin Park, where the courts are in very poor shape, and hopefully will be redone in the next couple of years. However, in the meantime, the city staff and the club have come up with compromises and solutions that should allow us to return to pickleball at Montecito. While I do not like the restricted hours of play, I'm willing to live with them. I know that Montecito has suffered financially because of the cease and desist order. Several members have left the club altogether, and many of us have put our memberships on hold, paying minimal dues while this situation was worked out. This has definitely financially hurt the club. I urge the neighbors to agree to the compromise plan. I respectfully request that the zoning administrator approve staff's recommendation and sign the minor conditional use permit. Thank you. My name is Cal Erickson. Um, I'm a member of Montecito and probably for 30 years as well. And I'd just like to point out that lots of times in life, things have everything we do has consequences. Sometimes those consequences are un un uh, not intentional, but they happen just the same. Um, pickleball was started at Montecito uh, in the fall in, in 2022. And I attended the first clinic that was put on by Heidi here. <laughs> and um, Heidi, um, she was our coach our mentor and a very close friend. And we miss a lot being able to play pickleball with her. And again, one of the un unintended consequences is Heidi no longer has a job as our coach. Uh, a group came together over the course of um, the year uh, and we were playing three afternoons a week from three to five. This became much more than a game to us and we became very close friends. Uh, sharing a lot of laughter. We tease each other a lot and we keep track of each other and our concerns. We used to celebrate birthdays and enjoy barbecues, but sadly, as a result of this action, we've lost our location to meet. It is not the health club that's been hurt by this action. It is the members represented by those who are sitting here today. As you can see, they're not a bunch of rowdy teenagers. They're not a bunch of drunken college students thinking they're on spring break. They're mostly retired seniors uh, who get together to have some healthy fun and friendship playing pickleball. This club is our cheers bar. It's where we're always welcome and everyone knows our name. Sadly, our favorite activity has been taken from us for, I thought it was six months now, I guess it's eight months. My hope is that those who file the action will reconsider the effect that it's had on us and allow us to get back to playing our game that we Thank love you. very soon. Thank you. My name is Larry Zeck, been a Santa Rosa taxpayer for 41 years and involved in the community with a lot of different things. And going on to what Cal said, it's an interesting thing for me as I was involved in a lot of activities, but when my daughter went off to Cal Poly, I started traveling a lot for business. 
and uh, 22 years in the same job before I retired, when I finished retiring, I got back and I go, man, I've lived here all this time. And for a number of reasons, you know, people have moved away, Bill, some passed, realized that my support and friendship group that I'd had from all those earlier years, it's no longer there. And so uh, we decided to rejoin the health club. We'd been there for a while and that had left when I was uh, traveling so much. And uh, my goal was to uh, get socialized again because it was a, a shocking thing to me after all those years and getting back to retirement. And once all the little projects around the house were done that you say you're going to do and you retire, I was going, wow, what next? So I had always wanted to try to play pickleball. And so I saw a, a newsletter from the club and I it was about a pickleball gathering, which I and I thought it said for beginners, all ages welcome. And it may have said that, but so I just went and lo and behold, I got there and, you know, people were good and playing and that kind of thing. And I had never played before, but uh, thanks to a lot of people that are in this room, they <clears> welcomed <throat> me in and the socialization part has been massive for me and my wife where she has played pickleball, but we attend classes there now. And it was a big part of our lives getting adjusted back after the retirement period. And I'm grateful for it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mary Antonia, I'd just like to add that um, for me, after the pandemic, and you know, all these people, they talk about a new about the paper now being mm -hmm. depressed, stuff like that. So after the pandemic, my husband and I, after sitting home in our pajamas day after day, um, <laughs> not going anywhere, staying away from everybody because we're seniors and we have to be safe. I talked to my husband into going down. I saw the notice too about playing pickleball. So I talked to my husband, let's go down, let's play pickleball. So we went down and through that, um, you know, playing pickleball is, I mean, you're laughing, you're socializing, you're, you're I mean, I never laugh so hard playing football. It's a good sport, but you're, a lot of it is social. It's fun. Got to come down and try it if you haven't done it, really. So for us, for me, um, that's part of it. Yeah, it's pickleball. I know. It, and, and I just wanted to address one thing about um, there's like the, the Flamingo has like a hotel there too. And they say, well, all these people from the hotel will come over and play pickleball. But last year, I think, I mean, I played there almost, you know, two or three times a week and you'd see somebody come from the whole from the hotel, usually probably a pair of people. Maybe one time there were six at the maximum, but there's not a lot of people that go to the Flamingo to play pickleball. They go to the lay by the pool and have poo poo drinks and believe, pretend like they're in the white. Really. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if you're intending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Okay. Hi, my name is Carrie Bodine. I live on Sunrise Avenue on the hill above the Flamingo. My husband, Brian Haven, is here as well. Our concerns fall into two categories. First and foremost is the quality of life. We spend a significant amount of time outside in our backyard on those beautiful Santa Rosa days when it's not the heat of summer, the very same days that your pickleball players love to be out there. And our second concern is the resale value of the home. I appreciate the stats that you shared, and I'm sure that's true when uh, a noise nuisance is not present. Um, for those reasons, we ask the following considerations. Please require the Flamingo to provide and only allow noise dampening paddles and when they're available, uh, noise dampening balls. I'm sure you all have your own paddles, um, but this seems like a, to me, a reasonable thing. Um, we ask the city to assess the noise level on the hill behind the Flamingo prior to granting a permit. Sound moves in every direction, not just parallel with ground. It also travels faster in warmer air. So sound waves are refracted upwards away from the ground. And we're not confident, um, given the current noise that we hear, um, that the curtains will have the um, intended effect. Please require uh, uh, fling the Flamingo to enforce a ban on foul language. Um, please ban tournaments. Um, should you decide to allow tournaments, please put specific stipulations in um, that limit tournament activity and related noise. 
Um, we ask that all verbal commitments by the Flamingo be written stipulations of the permit so that they're legally obligated to keep their word and that the surrounding neighbors have recourse to pause. If not, um, love all the neighbors that are here. We want to support you. Um, would you consider restricting play to health club members only um, and not to those rowdy spring break hotel guests? Um, we ask for a written stipulation regarding customer service standards. And um, given how popular the sport is, we just plead for you to provide legal recourse if the noise requirements are not met or new issues arise once we're able to see what usage actually is. Um, uh, thank you for your time. And I do have written copies of this um, for the committee. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Catherine McBride. And I really wish I, I'm very nervous, and I really wish I had written down my comments. But I live at uh, Vigilite Senior Apartments since 2012. It is a uh, development for seniors and disabled, built by HUD. And when you looked at your aerial shots, we were the lower left. We look like Monopoly houses. Um, and it's a very old community. And by that, I mean, we're all very old who live there. And this is my third appearance before uh, 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 permitting for the Flamingo. And um, I'm sorry to say um, the concerns we voice as a senior community uh, have not been uh, recognized. We don't live in hills. We don't live in Bennett Valley. We don't live blocks away. We live on Long Drive. And we are separated by the Flamingo and the tennis courts and the outdoor pools by a chain link fence. And that entire area is concrete. The shopping center on 4th Street is concrete. Grace Track is concrete. My own property is concrete, parking lots and driveways. The Flamingo is a lot of concrete. And the noise that we get from the Flamingo and the health center is not just one type of noise. We get the swimming pool noise. We get the parking lot noise. We get the um, a tennis court noise. I can hear the swim coach uh, coaching the, the, the people. I can hear the tennis balls. So pickleball is on top of all that already existing noise. Um, the, no the parking, I know that we've been assured there's sufficient parking, but when there are events at the Flamingo, people park on our property which means we can't even get emergency vehicles on our property. And as I said, we're an old property, people in their 80s and 90s. And I want you to consider that although it's your sport, it's my home. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Hi, I'm Nick Allen. I live on Rogers Way in the neighborhood. Um, Monet has provided me with all the documents submitted by the applicant. And in a letter dated March 18th, the owner of JMC Lighting claims the installation of the noise barriers at the Flamingo uh, Pickleball Courts would reduce noise levels by uh, 15 dBA. Uh, other attachments in this letter go on to contradict this claim. The letter claims a study done with JMC acoustic sound barrier curtains in Walnut Creek demonstrates the barriers would have the same effect at the Flamingo. At the Flamingo. However, these two cases are non-congruent. The barriers alone do not account for all of the reduction in noise level. Proximity plays a major role. Measurements taken from the residential areas at the Walnut Creek site were 99 feet from the pickleball courts, and the courts at the Flamingo are about 10 feet from where the offending sound measurements were taken. In fact, the role of distance on sound dampening is clearly laid out by the other attachments with the JMC letter from the last page, quote, even at 100 feet in consideration for equipment and sound barriers, the level will be about 20, uh, 52 dBA, end quote. This aligns very closely with the readings taken in the Creek. This attachment also points out how doubling the distance will reduce the level by 6 dB. The inverse of this is also true. The level will increase by 6 dB each time the distance is halved. Using JMC's numbers, sound levels 25 feet from the court with these barriers installed is expected to be 58 dBA. At the Flamingo property line, this would be over 60 dBA, including with the barriers installed. Further, it seems there is not enough information available for anyone to make an informed decision. The two-page letter from JMC, as obtained by the city, appears to be missing at least one page. 
Monet has informed me this is the way the letter was submitted to the city. Also, the Walnut Creek study does not take topology of the surrounding neighborhood into account. It is unreasonable to assume that a 10 to 12 foot tall barrier would serve equally well for a single story dwelling on level grade as a two story apartment up the hill. I propose this permit being issued based on lack of the clear information available. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, basically, I had a prepared speech and then we've touched on a number of different things. Can you state my your name? Mike, Mike Arnold. I live on Rogers Way. I live, uh, my property is contiguous with the, uh, the tennis courts. Um, I have been there. Uh, I started uh, the purchase of property in 1985. So no, I didn't purchase it with the idea of a health club being there. Um, I am an act, active in a number of different sports and pickleball is probably something that I would thoroughly enjoy. So that is not my issue whatsoever. It's the it's the ability of the Flamingo Hotel and Club to meet their commitments. Once these permits have been issued, they do not follow up. I'm the one that sent in the original complaint about the pickleball. I'm not against the game. It's the sound. So when you talk to them down at the club and you ask them, hey, could you turn this down? Could you stop that? Could you commit to a different time? They were going out there as early as 6.30 in the morning when they first started. So then you call the club and you ask them. They go, oh, don't, we're not going to do anything about it. In fact, one time I called about a noise complaint and they simply said, are you a neighbor or are you a hotel guest? And I said, does it make a difference? And they said, well, sure. If you were a, a hotel guest, we'd ask them to turn it off. And I said, well, I'm a, I'm a neighbor. He says, well, the class will be over in 35 minutes. Okay. In January, since pickleball was discontinued, we still have the noise coming up. It's not about the noise necessarily all the time. It's about how they react to it. I called the hotel. It was 1130 at night. I called the front desk. I said, hey, could you tell them to turn down the music or take it inside and they go, well, I'm sorry, the hotel is booked for a four-day group, and we can't do anything about it. So can I speak to the night manager? We don't have one. Can I speak to your head of security? There isn't it. I said, okay, fine. I'm going to call the police department. And they go, fine, go ahead. I did. Oh, sorry. The officer, the I'm sorry. Officer did show up. She came up to my property and said, it is Thank much you. louder up here. Thank you. I'm, I'll follow him and I'll finish the story. Yes, we had to call the police to get it stopped. Immediately when they came on our property, they noticed that it was excessive. I'm Kit Arnold. I'm Mike's wife. Um, we are the ones that have put in the complaint. Um, basically, um, that they wanted, uh, okay, they had put in four pickleball courts without a permit and or playing. And there were people when I have them on my phone proving that they were there at 6 30 in the morning and they didn't stop playing. They were hotel guests, so there was no control, nothing going on. Um, at times, we have to close our windows because it's noisy, it's, it's bounding off. We can't keep our windows open when we live in a lovely area. Hi, I'll stand up. Um, I, I received notices. I reached out to all the vigilites, the woodlands and that. They need to know it. Not all of them had read the permit. There's a lot more in it. You're moving a basketball court. You're moving a backboard. There's going to be noise. Woodland is going to get more. I'm going to get more. Um, I, in fact, if they've increased their hours, they said they could reduce them. They have not. It's March to October, 9 a.m. to 7, November to February 9 to sunset. Um, one hour of play is 60 minutes. One minute of play you could have 20 hits. I know, Tom, you could have more than that, probably 40. 20 hits a minute would be 1,200 hits per hour. Four courts would be 4,800 hits per hour. Eight courts would be 9,600 hits per hour. Eight hours a day with one court would be 96. That's 10,000 hits on your wall. That could be a hammer, somebody hammering. You're doing it for eight to 10 hours. I know you enjoy it. I love pickleball. I go play at courts public courts. I play at friends' courts. So I'm not against pickleball. The noise is excessive and they won't stay under the 55 decibels. And the noise that goes on at the club, there are many other things going on. I am also a real estate agent, which I got a shop in and I can say, you have to do a report and you have to tell them about noise. And you do have to disclose when there is a noisy dog, if there's a noisy uh, in your backyard, 
this would be a noise complaint that I would have to have my clients put on it. So it does make a difference. And I've had people not buy because of the noise of the freeway. And the freeway is not that far away. I don't run out of time. But Thank you. That, I did. Thank you. Review the real estate. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. Hi. And I'm going to go here and be proud. So you know who I am. Uh, my name is Mark Holzman, and my wife and I, Jamie, have lived at 2170 Rogers Way. It's a family home, and we have been there for over 70 years, well before the flamingo, well before the condos, well before the neighborhood. There, let me get it ready. Oakmont was the first place that transferred in Santa Rosa their tennis courts into pickleball courts. The conditions for that were that the, the courts were actually 40 feet away from the nearest property residential line and another 40 feet away till you hit the actual residence. There is no other place in Santa Rosa or Sonoma County or I know in California where a proposed pickleball court is five feet away from residential property line. And according to the city and the city infill requirements, that's going to have to be a multi-story, multi-family unit with the back maybe 15 to 20 feet. The sound cards aren't going to help. The amount of noise is not is going to be phenomenal. There is what they call the shadow box. It may, charge may work on the first floor, but noise goes up, over, sideways, and lateral. It's good to call the saddle box. Anything two-story, it's going to be impacted with 55 decibels or more. Before the system desist order, we talked about when the pickleball was played, and it was played marginal. Granted, really, there were older people doing it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, the town steps reflected that. They said that it was going to be 55. It was 55. But remember, that's 55 and 70 decibel right at the edge of my property. Would any of you have appreciated that? No. Would any of you have appreciated the amount of debasement of my real estate? If you had to lose $300,000, $500,000, um, I'll have my wife finish it off then. Thank you, sir. I'm Jamie Holzman. Mark is my husband. And um, my husband's researched the noise level that a company pickleball play. And it's not so much the decibels of the sound, but the high-pitched hertz. What this means is that the human ear is more accustomed to hearing high-pitched sounds rather than low bass sounds. This is what most people complain about. And, and it is that particular noise that goes on all day. It's just, you can't go out and garden. You can't go out in your backyard because it's continual. Um, he researched, uh, uh, he, and he has noted where he did his research. Um, we're wondering why everybody who can't, who, who goes to play on the pickleball courts can't use those paddles because when people go to use the health club, they don't bring their own weights and their own jump rope. So, you know, they're provided for them. I think that's, that's a compromise. Um, we have a long history of being neighbors with the Flamingo Hotel, and there's been some history that has involved broken promises and deaf ears to the issues of noise, repair, and replacement of required acoustic fencing and wayward tennis balls. The representatives at the neighborhood meeting suggested that they would check in with us every six months to see how things were going. We do not feel that is a reliable way to monitor this process. We feel if there is any approval of any part of what they are proposing should fall under a conditional or provisional approval. And, and that way we have a, a, a legal recourse. We have someone to, that we can rely on to check in to say, what you approved isn't working on A, B, C level. And I think, we can't trust that, that, that they are just gonna check in with us every six months and say, hey, how's it going? So that's basically what I'm gonna say. My name is Brett Anderson. I've lived in town for 64 years. 
I live above the club on Chaparral Road. I don't hear pickleball, but I do hear the football games. I do hear Highway 12. I do hear sirens. I do hear uh, cars racing around. I do hear the fair. I hear the monster trucks. I hear a lot of things that are way above 55 decibels. So I don't know where this game stops, but it's got to stop somewhere. Is there anybody? Oh, yes. Yeah. I just didn't speak earlier. <clears throat> I am here to support pickleball. Uh, I'm a former tennis player, now a pickleball player. For a while, I could do both. Now I can barely do the pickleball. I'm out there. Mm -hmm. And listening to the neighbors, my heart really goes out to you because I'm a noisemaker. I live in the country and I run my tractor and I run the blower and I run the weed whacker and I make a lot of noise. And I think if we all did it at the same time, it probably would be awful. But we have all learned to live with that noise. I'm not sure how it is with the sound tarp, but I think the neighbors should have a way if the sound tarp doesn't work, come back to the city. I hope that's part of it. And I would love to keep playing at the uh, at, at, uh, Montecito. And, uh, but I really, it's, it's very sad. On the other hand, you don't want to have an Airbnb next to you because people will no longer have a hotel where they can come and visit. And uh, that might be pretty awful too, but... Uh, I know I can always see both sides, but <laughs> I want to make sure that if uh, my club says they will do something, that they really will do it and listen to the neighbors. So that's. Oh, I'm Renata Breath, and I live in on Linwood, thirty-two fifty-five, far away from the pickleball noise. <laughs> Except I have a backboard and I can make noise too. <laughs> Is there anyone else wishing to make a public comment on this item? Uh, with the applicant, I OC. Get, I didn't get to ask just a direct question. How many people did you send letters out as far as people that live in the neighborhood within 600 feet? It goes to neighbors, the big answer. Yeah, I don't know. back and forth. So the letter goes to neighbors within 600 feet, yes, and gets posted to our local newspaper, Press Democrat, and two signs are being posted on the site too. Right. And how many letters do you send out to residents? I, did I send you the Excel sheet? Did you ask for the Excel sheet list yeah, of that? So all those are the ones that they get it. I did not get it. Okay. Um, do you remember the number? I don't remember getting the Excel sheet. Someone, someone, asked, get me, someone asked me for the list. So it probably was someone else. Let me look at the list. I can tell you how many are in the list. Yeah, if you email Monet, she can get you that okay. after this. Like an ish. I can check this Excel sheet right now. It's interesting to know how many poems are being informed. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to make a public comment on this item? Okay. And Monet can reach out to you after this item. Um, does the applicant want to make any closing remarks? You know, I just, just in um, support of what I said last week in the conversation, um, you know, words are cheap if they're not followed by actions, right? Like you've asked for provision. We don't have an opposition to a provision. If that's going to um, allow you to feel trust, you know, at least in the first steps of the process that we are willing to keep our word. If, if for some reason we're out there testing, because we're going to test too, right? Um, the USDA, I think it's the USDA, we, you can get the app right on your phone that's a legitimate sound test that is the same equivalence as the official uh, apparatus, the test. So we're going to test ourselves too. We'll put an extra layer of tarp. We'll do, we'll do whatever we can um, or have to do to make sure we're in compliance at all times. So I just really want to iterate that if, if, if it's a provision that's needed, you know, I don't know that it's necessarily reasonable to ask members who've been playing pickleball a long time to have to change their paddles because that's a pretty significant ask, you know, for someone who's an athlete and likes their tool. Um, certainly something we can consider. Um, the other thing I will say is in terms of hours of play, 
So just because the hours of play are opened for that chunk of time, there will not be full court press for those whole hours of play. There's never been, and even when the sport regains traction and maybe some of our members come back that have left, which has been a significant amount, um, those are all on hold. Um, there still was never nonstop play out there. So, you know, I just, I think that that's an area of um, consideration that needs to be um, taken into account when you're kind of thinking of the fairness of wherever this lands for us. So again, you know, actions speak louder than words and you won't know that my words mean much until we've walked through the process and see where we land after this hearing. Thank you. And are you willing to um, accept a condition requiring the use of the um, quiet paddles? And well, we're already going to do that for okay. the resort guest. So okay. we'll buy like 35 paddles so that anyone that comes from the resort, any group, any individual will have to use these. Um, I'm certainly willing to consider if that's a requirement for our members. I just don't know that that's a fair requirement. Um, what I've heard from my members as a whole is, is it would be a sticking point for a lot of them to maybe even rejoin or continue. They might go somewhere else that doesn't have that requirement. So I think that there's a cost um, issue and a social issue to our club members that if they can't play with their own tools that they would go elsewhere and they would further disband the, the community of pickleball players and the social aspect that they gain from being able to play there. So, I mean, I, I think it's something that can be considered. I think with the other mitigations you know, the, you know, cost of doing business set aside, you know, the, the tarps alone are almost $30,000 to put up, you know. But this is um, the cost to you. Sir, no, no back and forth. It's, I'm just saying it's it's the cost of doing business, right? And to be a good neighbor, to do what we can. Um, and like I said, if we need to put up another layer of tarp and, and incur the cost of that, we will, you know. We will, I, for me, it's a matter of my word and my integrity. And I believe that that's the backing that I have from the owners and the general manager. And, you know, we're here to do the right thing. May I ask a clarification? No, so, sorry, um, you've already spoken. Um, is there anyone else that hasn't spoken yet that would like to speak? May I? Yes. My name is Stephen Boswell. I'm the general manager of the uh, Flamingo and of the spa. And I can just uh, uh, endorse what uh, Laura has worked very, very hard coming up with a solution. And uh, we, uh, we all work for the new management company that's been here just over a year. And that is with uh, Pyramid Global Benchmark Hotels. Uh, we represent over 400 hotels in the world. We're the fourth largest management company in, in, in the world. And I just want to uh, let everyone know that uh, um, we will back what we say. And um, I also represent 200 of the staff members that we, and team members that we have on the property. So um, we hope that um, we can continue and go and open our table all back up. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to close the public comment period now. Um, I've read over um, um, Planner Shea Colley's findings. Um, this, the proposed sound barrier um, will help uh, deafen or dampen the sound um, from the pickleball court. The hours of operation um, appear to be reasonable from nine to seven during summer months and nine to sundown in the winter. Um, I'm going to ask for an added condition that um, resort members um, use the sound dampening paddles to help mitigate noise further in response to the neighbors' concerns. And um, with that, I'm able to make all the findings required for the conditional use permit. Um, with that added condition, um, I feel like the um, project will be a good neighbor. Um, if there are any concerns after this action, um, 
you can com um, lodge a complaint with code enforcement. They'll make an investigation. And if needed, um, planning could revoke a per this permit. So um, with that, I'll be approving um, conditional use permit for the club at Flamingo Global Court at 27774 Street, file number CUP 23-066 with the added condition. Um, this uh, action is subject to appeal within 10 calendar days. And for this item, that date is May 28th, 2024. So if you have an appeal, um, that's the um, deadline for you to apply. And the appeal would be heard by the Planning Commission. So thank you everybody for attending for this item. We will move on to the next item. Thank you. Yes. Excuse me, we're still in a meeting. Yes, we're moving on to the next item. If you move out. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. I agreed with you that the guests. That's guests. Yeah, I'll make sure, Moni. Yeah, and if there's any questions. Oh, thank you. Welcome. Be the guest. Yes, yes. 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 You submit an appeal with the clerk's office by May 28th. Okay. Yes, usually it's two minutes. <laughs> So we're, yes. we're still in a meeting. Yeah, you can ask Monet questions. Yeah, Monet's the best person. To... All right, moving on. <laughs> so item 6.2 has been um, continued to a date certain. Yes. Okay, what's the date? Uh, staff is requesting that this item be uh, moved to a uh, date certain of June 6, 2024. Um, a public hearing request has been submitted. It is being okay. So. Thank you. I move Thank to you. Uh, continue item 6.2 to June 6, 2024. Moving on to item 6.3. It's a public meeting for a design review for exterior facade changes at 1150 Cotting Town, file number DR24 003. And Planner Bisla will be presenting. Thank you. Let me thank you. My, we were here for the um, 551 Summerfield Cinema. So oh, yes. We'll, we'll, yes. There was we'll a there request the for meeting. a public hearing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for all you do. I know. It's, now you know where to come next time. Like, yeah. Now <laughs> we know. It, so we just come back here. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Don't get re-noticed. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Continue. Thank you, Zoning Administrator Tumians. Um, my name is Sichnor Bisla, and the project before you today is for exterior facade changes at 1150 Cotting Town. Uh, the applicant is requesting a full exterior facade update and uh, with the use of modern architectural features, materials, and colors. Um, here's the location site. It is located on the in the Cotting Town Plaza um, to the south of the mall. And here's a close-up aerial view. It is just um, on the edge of the property uh, towards Edwards Avenue. The general plan land use designation for the site is Transit Village Mixed Use, and the zoning is TBMSA. Here are the photos of the existing site. Um, 
all of the buildings along Edwards Avenue kind of have this look to them. Mm -hmm. um, and here are the renderings. Mm -hmm. um, it will be Xfinity taking over the suite. Mm -hmm. And uh, the architecture matches much of the architecture seen on other places in the plaza, um, including the mall, the Dick Sporting Goods. Um, and I believe the architect Henry Wicks is doing um, all of the updates uh, that have been taking place at Codding Town. Mm -hmm. uh, so the architecture style is extremely similar all around. Mm -hmm. The project is categorically exempt from CEQA um, under a class one exemption because it involves minor alterations to an existing structure. There are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review, no public comment has been received, and staff analysis has concluded that all findings can be met for this project. Therefore, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor design review to allow exterior facade changes at 1150 Cottingtown. And for any questions or comments, this is my contact information. Thank you. Thank you. Is, um, does the applicant want to make uh, any statements or? No, okay. and the applicant, uh, uh, no one from the applicant team uh, is here to answer any okay. questions. Yeah. Got it. Thank you, Planner Bisla. Mm -hmm. I will open it up to public comment. If you're attending in person, wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I would close the public comment. Um, it, I um, like the design. I feel like it will be a, a huge improvement um, for the facade update. Um, and I will be approving um, DR 24-003 for exterior facade changes at 1150 Cottingtown. Um, please note that this action is final unless the appeal is filed at the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days today's decision pursuant to zoning code section 20-62.030 and for this item that date is may 28th 2024 thank you thank you and item 6.4 with was withdrawn so um that is the last item on the agenda and with that i will adjourn this zoning administrator meeting thank you everybody